welcome to another exciting and informative edition of Simply Electric. We're glad to have you with us. This time we're featuring the best-selling electric SUV in the entire world, specifically the brand new Tesla Model Y Performance, which is also built right here in Berlin. Yes, we are in Berlin at the famous Gigafactory. The question we need to ask ourselves, and not through the rose-colored Tesla fanboy glasses, but completely neutrally, is this really the best electric SUV in the world? at least check the value for money. We want to see with you, how is the ride comfort? Let's take another look at the car from front to back because the Tesla Model 3 has received a significant upgrade with the Highland, also in terms of equipment and quality. And now we're going to take a look at whether the Tesla Model Y is still considered up to date. Elon Musk reportedly wrote that there will likely be no facelift refresh of the Model Y before the end of the year where the whole community is eagerly waiting, since although it's not outdated, it could use some nice changes here and there. People are eager for updates to improve the experience and functionality. We've already shown you the Tesla Model 3 Highland in two different videos, so you have the ideal comparison to the Model Y, highlighting what the differences might be. There will be a second video with the consumption monitoring where we will see on the highway how efficient a Tesla Model Y is, also in terms of relativity. To the Model 3, respectively Model 3 Highland, and we want to do the charging check from 10 to 80%. You see, there's a lot on board. The only thing you need to check again is the subscription. Already part of the Simply Electric community? If not, we'd be thrilled if you subscribe, and then you won't miss the consumption ride. Now let's start with the review and the test drive of the Tesla Model Y dual motor performance. And as always, we'll begin from the outside. Starting from the front, take a closer look at the front of the Tesla Model Y and we can actually see a Tesla Model 3 that's been slightly elevated, made somewhat bulkier. And given that typical electric SUV signature look, we have it here in midnight cherry red. And that's really an intriguing new color, kind of like a dark cherry red with a beautiful pearl effect, I would say. Looks very, very chic, also has a nice shine. And we have LED headlights here, which can partially also, depending on they could also eventually turn into enhanced matrix functions through a simple software upgrade. And the Tesla community is constantly buzzing about what is essentially a rolling computer on wheels. But a driving computer must of course drive well. That's what we want to discover with you. For the performance model, you always have 21 inch wheels as standard. The Uber Turbine rims are beautifully done in a black satin matte finish with 255-35R21 tires. Is it efficient though? We'll find out together in the second video by thoroughly testing and analyzing the car's highway fuel consumption. Yes, yeah, Stefan, what definitely doesn't work, which we already noticed in the Tesla Model 3 Highland, is this splash guard or I don't even know what it's supposed to be. Yeah, splash guard, mm -hmm. yes. It almost goes down to the ground, which I think is totally overdimensioned in terms of looks and takes away, I think, a bit of its elegance from the side, doesn't it? Yes. Doesn't really appear nice. What Tesla did a few years ago was to replace the aluminum accent with a black matte finish, including black handles. Naturally, it aligns with this Bordeaux dark red very well and looks quite elegant. What we typically have, as with most SUVs, is indeed this protective plastic edge over the wheel arches. But I have to say, the car seems relatively well made overall. We don't have any issues with the panel gaps at all, and there are absolutely no paint drips to be found. The paint is also really, really well done. I must say, Tesla has really improved over the years, and especially here with the performance model. By adding this carbon fiber spoiler edge to the vehicle, the entire car looks somewhat more elongated, and in my opinion, it looks visually much better and more appealing overall. Yes, the performance always has the dual motor lettering right here with the distinctive red stripe for performance. You can always tell when the customers don't remove it that you're definitely driving a performance model with its distinctive features. What I think is really awesome about the Model Y is that it comes with privacy glass as a standard feature. That means the rear windows are nicely tinted and because of that, the entire car looks just a bit more sporty and elegant on the road. It is 4.75 meters long, 1.92 meters wide plus side mirrors, 1.62 meters high, and the wheelbase is 2.89 meters. In between, we have a variety of different battery packs. It starts with the rear wheel drive standard range, I believe, with 60 kilowatt hours gross and 55 kilowatt hours usable. Tesla isn't too keen on showing their hand and is starting in Germany for 44,090 euros in June 2024, currently. Even with an environmental bonus, Wolf on Lega paths with 6,000 euros, you could basically get started. 
currently, if you were to strike now, at 38,990 euros. Yes, then it goes on. Then you have the handcrafted model with a large battery available for 48,090 euros. Then there's the dual motor, where you have two motors plus a big battery pack. Then out of 77 kilowatt hours gross, roughly 75 kilowatt hours net are actually usable. Then starting at around 54,090 euros. Here with the performance, we start at 59,190 euros plus Midnight Chariot Red, which I believe adds about 2.6K to the price. Feel free to check it out at your convenience. And with the white interior option for 1,200 euros, we're just under 65,000 euros with our test model here. For that, we will get two motors, a high performance motor on the rear axle and a regular motor on the front axle. Combined 534 horsepower, a system torque of 660 Newton meters should go from zero to 100 in 3.8 seconds. We'll check that with you with the Draghi via GPS to see if it really pulls it off today. And of course, you will be getting one of the most high performing electric SUVs available on the market because it is supposed to have that famous Tesla punch, which we will also be testing with you. What Tesla genuinely does well is managing weight, meaning this car weighs around two tons. So in this collegial competition, the cars generally weigh about 100 to 200 kilos less. Let's hope this doesn't compromise the interior noise insulation because we're going to test that out with you in a moment. Speaking of the battery pack, let's move on to the charging port. We have it nicely integrated here on the driver's side in the tail light. I have to say, I really like it. Opens electrically, closes electrically and charges. AC, that is alternating current, three phase up to 11 kilo dollars. So that means with the reported 77 kilowatt hours gross, 75 kilowatt hours net, it would take around seven hours to go from completely empty to completely full. And with a large battery pack, you can probably charge up to 250 kilo dollar DC instead of 170 kilo dollar DC. We'll find that out during our detailed consumption drive and charging check to verify if it performs as expected at a regular HPC meeting all our criteria. It's all a bit flimsy, isn't it? We're only listening to it electrically after all. Back then you were just barely touching it in my Tesla Model S. Yeah, now it's become a bit more stubborn. Besides the price performance ratio starting at 38,090 euros after the environmental bonus for stock vehicles, the Tesla Model Y offers, and that's why I think it's one of the most popular electric SUVs, lots of space because Tesla uniquely utilizes unused areas for storage, ensuring maximum convenience for customers without compromising on other features. So here in the front as well, with I think an impressive 117 liters, I believe only the Tesla Model X tops that where theoretically even Stefan could fit in. We can try that out in a Tesla Model X video, see Good if up. it fits. Definitely exciting. Exactly, and if we can even get it closed, <laughs> we could have tried it with the Cybertruck. Oh yeah. <laughs> we both could have tried to clean ourselves up together, I think. And I have to say, I just find that simply brilliant. And although Tesla has saved on hood lifters here, they have installed hood dampers. Tesla doesn't need insulation. Everything is well insulated inside. We'll check during the noise test. Now let's go ahead and take a moment to hear what a Gigafactory hood sounds like, shall we? Three, two, uh, wait a minute, nine. wait. Uh, a minute, look how the sun beautifully shines on this Midnight Sherry Red. Could you get a bit closer to it? Hey, it's sparkling at me like that. I was never really a big fan of reddish cars, you know? Pretty cool, huh? That's really great. Now the countdown, three, two, one. Damn, chin, that wasn't clean at all, right? Yeah, I somehow expected more too. Then I'm quite disappointed by that. Speaking of the Gigafactory, what's also gigantic is not just that the tailgate opens electrically, but that there are simply a whopping 854 liters of storage space behind it, Stefan. And that's not a small amount by any means, yes. That's mass. And when you take this pamphlet out from the rear shelf for a moment, you can clearly see at first glance it's a bit wobbly, not so well made, perhaps even poorly constructed. But anyway, 154 liters, how incredibly awesome is that really? You also have an adjustable rear seat, which is now set upright to show the maximum possible volume capacity that can be achieved. Here you have, please take a look, another one of those huge and very spacious storage compartments. Well, that's really big, sorry. And I have to say, Tesla is really doing it best now. Shelves on the left and right. Uh, you can definitely fit the huge ceramic vase from your mother-in-law in there. And then the whole thing is expertly lined with carpet, making it warm and inviting. The only Tesla thing here might be this hard plastic with this delivery van plastic edge. If there were also something like that, I think it was the same with my Tesla Model S, like an aluminum elixir. 
Then yeah. it would be perfect, wouldn't it? Yes, then it's less scratch prone. And then we forgive this wobbly rear shelf, although it's not always perfect with other manufacturers either. So this isn't just a pure Tesla problem. And here, this van plastic here on the side, right? All right, the shelf. But look, if you swivel up here, it's delivery van plastic again. And here's some more carpet. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I kind of get it like this. Not a part, not whole. We've got another small lamp right here, which is definitely good. And boxes, right? Yeah, very good. I mean, they always make the sound really awesome. Yeah, long story short, we have the option to fold just the middle section down here, which I think is really great for a long item or even for skis for the winter vacation. And that too in a very, very nice breadth. So I would say that's about 24%, right? Yeah, maybe 26. Okay, so that means we still have 38% left on the left and right, right, right? Because we're math professors in training. Here we're nicely electrified, Stefan, with a robust bang of 854 liters. The whole yeah, left uh, side also again on the driver's side, clearly demonstrating the impact we've been studying in this process. Wow. Then you get over 2,100 liters of storage volume. And if you take a look at the coupe-like line here, notice how high it stays here. Tesla does that on purpose. They purposely keep it high here so that you have this ample storage space available. Then it is for many. The ones traveling with family are just great because they can fit everything in here. Thinking about the next step, we're in the middle of festival season. Put a small mattress in the back. Two can sleep here easily. Yeah. Where do I shower and go to then? Sure, you can go and take care of that in the shower container then. Ah, cool. So let me guess, what happens then electrically? Probably operates electrically. And then I'll probably manage to mount a roof rack up here, giving extra storage for luggage and equipment. That was always like Tesla with 75 kilograms of roof load, right? For the roof box Raw. enthusiasts, correct? Raw. And then there's the option with the tow hitch, which I believe costs an additional one, 300 euros. What else can we add to it? 1.6 tons, respect. So that's definitely a decent and impressive trailer, you know, considering the Dutch proportions. That's definitely a medium-sized sports boat, isn't it? Yeah, you can get something out of it. Garden waste and a bike rack too. Although we only have 72 kilos of tongue weight, it's still handy for light loads. So yeah. Tesla is always listening and watching us. Shout out, 100 kilos would be awesome, right? That you could just fit four e-bikes up there, that would truly wow. be a dream, right? Yeah. But otherwise, folks, 854 liters of load volume expandable to 2100 and a bit more. Plus the 117 liters in the frunk, just imagine 1000 liters of trunk space. How incredibly amazing is that? This is such bullshit. Here, he always gets the 100% truth minus user errors. Well, we're being completely honest here, but now you have this slipper. How exactly are you going to get it in here? Yeah, I mean, for us non-Tesla fanboys, are we just so dumb or do we need to go back to school or something? Like maybe we are missing an obvious point here or is there a trick to it that we're just not getting? Perhaps we are overthinking this whole thing. Look, maybe pushed in like this. Look, another application yeah, error again. Really Look, it has a tiny catch back here and then he probably jumps from there to the other side. See, it's working now, right? You can do it just like this here. Actually, it's really not as bad as everyone says. Yeah. Wonderful. Why always worked up, huh? Yeah, because you never get around to moving. Man, if you know how it works, then it's really simple. Outside, we showed you everything. Let's move inside and first take a look. There's double glazing here, of course. Two panes connected with an insulating film, ensuring efficient interiors. We will find all this out together during our comprehensive measurement analysis. In the same way, we want to find out a bit about the interior because that's obviously a significant difference from the Tesla Model 3 Highland and everyone is naturally hoping, those who sympathize with Tesla, that an upgrade is coming here too, right? Yeah, let's think. And if we're being really, really honest, it could definitely use that, right? Yeah, it still feels kind of old fashioned and somewhat outdated. But let's proceed chronologically. Here we have a nice piece of plastic that's slightly foamed, but its texture gives a high quality impression. Here we have a white insert, I don't know. Maybe in the aftermarket there are carbon ones and who knows Alcantara to stick on. That's up to you. Here we also have a nice Alcantara surface. I quite like the quality. In the Highland, it's fabric, which we don't have here. It's a classic ambient lighting, multicolored. And Tesla does have a computer ambient lighting in here, but I think it's more of a basic lighting, like footwell lighting and such. No. Could be misunderstood sometimes. Um, otherwise, we have here, this is also a bit softly cushioned, a nice gray seam. Window regulator control, classic button for opening. And then, of course, we also have, I believe, the emergency release somewhere here. Installed here to manually open the door. 
yeah, down here it's actually a soft plastic again. I really have to praise Tesla for that. And here there's a nice carpet inside, so nothing rustles or clatters at all. I really have to say, nice big compartment, a two liter pet bottle fits in here too. Well, maybe it's not the most modern look anymore, but in terms of the material mix, I have to say, it wouldn't bother me now. You're slowly turning into a bit of a fanboy for Tesla here. So. Yes, I used to be Tesla Ollie. Many uh, still know me as Tesla Ollie. A, and many accuse me of Tesla bashing, but I don't do that at all. I just show things openly and honestly, what fits from my point of view and what doesn't. And constructive criticism like that must be tolerated by a Tesla fanboy with rose-colored glasses, right? Absolutely. The Tesla Model Y performance, and with that, welcome to the sleek interior. It's designed for simplicity and ease of use. Well, whether you like it or not, everyone has to decide that for themselves. I can always just point out what we don't have, and that's, for example, a head-up display, which would certainly make driving a bit easier for us, because we would simply see the speedometer without distraction. I know, the practice Tesla driver always has it in the corner of their eye up front. As I said, it's all in the eye of the beholder. Yes, the driver information display isn't part of the simplicity concept either. There are quite a few various options available in the aftermarket, allowing you to retrofit an additional display for those who might find it necessary. We have the classic turn signal lever, which I absolutely love and appreciate. And when it comes to the topic of blinking on the steering wheel, I've shared my personal experiences with you in two videos about the Model 3 Highland. Yes, we have a gear selector here, so not on the screen, classic. Then also with the autopilot operation, I have to say, um, I found that well handled on the display. This piece here, we don't really need it, right? Yeah, no, not really. Actually, what's more important would be a control for the wiper automation, <laughs> yeah, because somehow you know. it's really quite complicated, both on the display and in the functionality. Perhaps we can talk more on that later if it starts to rain. Yes, and we have a nice little steering wheel here, slightly flattened at the bottom. Also made of beautiful faux leather, feels very, very high quality, very soft. I have to say, even here with the two rotary knobs in a great control concept. So there's not much to debate this time. Yes, aluminum pedals are always included with the performance model, but you can also retrofit them from the aftermarket. Yes, and here we naturally have a software that's truly at its best, providing excellent performance. Not only that, we can see Midnight Sherry Red beautifully illuminated here, although in our grayish Berlin, it appears a bit more brooding than usual, and it definitely stands out. Yes. It's a bit darker. But here on the graphic, but we really have a navigation system that works incredibly smoothly from the processor, which is based on Google Maps and actually includes one of the best route guidance systems available. And in combination with the Tesla supercharger network, a trip, for example, if we just say we're going to Rome, is calculated super quickly. That's really just awesome, making it a highly efficient and user-friendly experience, allowing you to travel with ease. Super awesome, because Rome feels like it's about 1,500 kilometers away from us, I guess, right? Yeah. Approximately. And therefore, it now essentially calculates all the needed charging stops at the yes. superchargers, yes. along with the best driving route and required speed adjustments to ensure efficiency. And yes, I think it's just a brilliant story because you simply log in with your Tesla account and then conveniently and effortlessly arrive here safely and securely in the end without any worries or complications. So I have to say, it's really just a great and compelling story about what Tesla is offering and achieving here. And the menu structure as well, if you switch to Spotify or anywhere else, you'll notice that everything here is very very smooth there's no waiting time in the operation or in the handling and naturally you will get the latest improvements beamed into your car over the air every plus or minus 14 days completely free of charge without any extra effort well you have to say tesla is already leading the market there right that's something they can do what you can also do here with the alcantara underneath is two inductive chargers pads ergonomically perfectly arranged for both driver and passenger. So you can always see in the corner of your eye what's happening on your phone with minimal distraction. And having two of them, I think it's just brilliant. We've got large storage compartments here. That means we also have two, no, one, two PC ports. Nice. nice, big, deep compartment. We then have two cup holders here, conveniently placed. You can also add a drawer or storage solutions later through the aftermarket for more customization. There are many useful accessories available for Tesla vehicles. Yeah, well, they've been on the market a bit longer too. I think it stemmed a bit from Tesla always being a bit Spartan and you always get the extra needs after the fact. Exactly. Many people then came up with something on their own and somehow managed it. 
yes, sitting here is really fantastic on the white faux leather seats. And here too, the ergonomics with the storage compartment, which can be opened up nice and wide. Look, Stefan, this goes really deep here, so we can fit quite a bit in here as well. And what I also really like is that this compartment here is slightly angled upwards, which ergonomically facilitates the transition to the display with your arm, provided your arms are long enough. It's meticulously planned out to perfection. Definitely well thought out indeed. What we also have here is a really huge, extremely beautiful, large glass roof, uninterrupted and not divided like in the Model 3. But I have to say, unfortunately, once again, some constructive criticism. I kind of wished for a roller blind with a bit of sun protection because in August, with 35 degrees outside and the sun directly above, it's already like having a double hot plate on your head. Yeah, the planet's shooting through the roof. Also in the aftermarket sector, there are always some things you can clip and snap in, then clip and snap out again and fold them together. But that's what I expect from the manufacturer, right? Yeah, Maybe just sure. a nice blind and then it's fine, right? Yeah. The view through the passenger door gives you a great look at this white Interior that can be cleaned and maintained easily, ensuring it always looks absolutely great. So you don't have like you typically do with light leather interiors, those denim stains that you can never get rid of. So I've seen videos with chocolate, coffee and all sorts of stuff spilled here and where they managed to get the seat clean again. Yes, good support here in the thigh area, very good support here in the lumbar area, small shoulder pad, integrated headrest. But, and that's what Tesla does, just right, the Model 3 performance is being rolled out in Germany right now. There are real sports seats in there, and I obviously wish for the same with the facelift of the Model Y performance. To install some really cool and sporty racing seats in here, just to stand out more from standard models and give the interior a unique, special feel. Optionally, we have a glove compartment that conveniently opens via the display. Also nicely lined with felt and of a size that you can store something in it. What Tesla essentially omits is a lower open shelf where you could stash a men's handbag, which Stefan again forgot to bring. Or maybe even a small lady's handbag. So overall, it's all quite good. The only thing that's not so great, and I already noticed this with the Model S, is this hard plastic and that it always tends to rattle here. You know, when you're riding alone on cobblestones, it's a bit uncomfortable, right? And what I also expect from a performance model would be a highlight. This is also missing in the new Model 3 Performance Highland. Isn't that a dark headliner? Tesla, you guys are supposed to be sporty and performant. Shouldn't there be some dark skies in there as well? For many of you, it's also about transporting the entire family safely and comfortably in a car like this. And here, Tesla is also regarded as a market leader in the NCAP crash test, placing a very, very high emphasis on safety. And of course, that's also back here in the rear. Let's see with the sloping roof line exactly how much space we have back there and if it's comfortable enough for passengers. And I'm 1.85 meters tall, weigh 99.9 .9 kilos, and I want to try getting in here with you guys. That works really, really well for me. Back here in the rear, I have the option to adjust the rear seat backrest inclination. We've got a center armrest here that we can fold out once again. Lovely with the cup holder in the middle. This is also better solved in the Highland with the large center armrest that can be folded down and the cup holders in the front, in my opinion. That's why many people eagerly await the highly anticipated Model Y upgrade, expected to include several exciting new features. Child Isofix mounting here on the drivers and passengers sides. I have plenty of room width-wise here, but you see the passenger seat is adjusted to the B pillar and I actually have very little space here, Stefan. Yeah, well, but that's already more than enough space. <laughs> nah, so let's take a good and detailed look at the ID4, ID5, Skoda Enyaq, Q4 Audi e-tron, because I've always had a firm and reliable grip on that. I'm feeling a bit off. Yeah. You've got really long thighs, though. That doesn't matter. Yeah. I have them in the Audi and VW, so yeah. the thighs stay the same. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, long story short, everything is well processed. You're sitting a bit higher here, typical for an SUV. I don't like this hard truck plastic here at least we have a small seat pocket and back here it's nice and soft as well with a faux leather underlay so the interior is really great the exterior could use some work and what's also missing here like with the highland is a display here we have two usb-c ports here are two air vents but then we also have this huge empty space. Although I saw in the aftermarket that there are even such small refrigerators available here. That would be awesome, of course. Absolutely brilliant, yeah. Just to have a refreshing drink of water in the summer. So in that sense, I'm kind of mixed. Everything is nice and flat here. I believe you can even sit three people in the middle. 
quite comfortably. If my seat is fully pushed back, there's barely any room for your knees. I have to sit sideways somehow. Uh, I'm a bit confused and irritated right now that here in the back seat area, there seems to be just a little less space compared to the competition, which is quite surprising to me. Not that it's all going in favor of the trunk, just so you know, Stefan. I get that, totally. But the Skoda Enyaq has 580 liters, which is almost 100 liters more. And if you took away the 100 liters here, then I would naturally have more leg room, you know? Yeah, sure. That's the space concept you use. So perhaps considering rear seat space versus a remarkably large trunk, feel free to write it in the comments. But we don't want to distract, we want to take you to the factory with us. Outside, we've shown you everything. Inside, we've shown you everything. Come along, we want to see how performant the Tesla Model Y performance is. We want to start with the turning circle of 12.10 meters. That means I can drive nicely around Stefan right here. Although to be honest, Tesla could still improve a bit there to make it even more perfect and convenient. Because for example, with the Mercedes EQS having a 10 degree rear axle steering, you get a turning circle of under 11 meters. I would wish, especially since many are using the Tesla Model Y in urban environments, that we somehow achieve turning circles of under 11 meters because that would be really practical if you ever want to make a u-turn but with 12 10 meters that's perfectly fine and standard for the market typical for vehicles of this class nowadays we want to ride over cobblestones with all of you and here we can notice that some things are rattling and clattering quite a bit yes it's getting tougher now on this bumpy cobblestone route sure we have a tightly performing suspension here but i have to say we actually have less noise otherwise Yes. That's true. Well, something seems to be rustling and clattering, but he drives smoothly, almost effortlessly and without problems. It has a nice direct steering and this steering wheel here, it feels remarkably good and comfortable to use. That's nice and thick. I have to say, just in the first few meters, it's really fun here with the Model Y. What I really, really like about the Tesla Model Y, and it was the same with the Model 3, is this sloping window. That means I have a very, very good all around view. Also, the windows here to the A-pillar, they seem to slope down a bit. This gives me a very good and comprehensive overview in the busy urban environment, which is very important for cyclists, pedestrians, and so on. Up to the C-pillar, it goes all around, but then the C-pillar and rear window have a different design. In the rear, they're obviously not as visible, but hopefully we have some sort of rear view camera on board, right, Stefan? Yes? We'll find that out very soon, so let's see here. This is the perfect transition with all of you, so let's take this moment to collaboratively test out the rear view camera together. I have to say, Tesla always does that solidly. Here, very, very nicely on the big display, where you also have assist lines and where you get a good view forward to then also park sideways here. Accordingly, carefully pull up a little bit more in front because we always have to be a bit extra careful with the oversized turbine rims to avoid any scratches or damages. They barely have rim protection to avoid scraping them somehow. What I really don't like about Tesla is the lack of ultrasonic sensors. We have this vision only system here or whatever it's called. I just have to say, why on earth would they choose that? Yeah, it's just hard. Okay, let's be real here, guys. No one can seriously tell me that the ultrasonic sensors at the front and back were actually a problem in terms of looks, right? No way, just take it. Come on, seriously. So why is Tesla getting rid of them? Because they claim they can do it with cameras. There are enough examples where people had accidents, caused expensive paint damage, where it just didn't work out. I know software keeps getting better, that's beyond question, but in the end, it's just a cost-saving measure for Tesla. Honestly, you have to admit they just save on the ultrasonic sensors to increase their profit margin. So what do we say back to the ultrasonic sensors? Yes, please. Maybe we need an official Tesla petition. That would be a cool and innovative approach, right? They have two signatures already. We want to have a conversation with you here on the A115 motorway. It's uh, uh, heading out of Berlin, specifically about the autopilot. And I'm actually quite surprised because our car supposedly comes with the full safe driving package, which is indeed the highest available level of the Tesla autopilot system technology, providing advanced safety features and capabilities. And uh, yes, it operates in a strangely unique way. Strange because we often test various vehicles with you and this one stands out due to its peculiar behavior. And especially when I think a bit about the VW group like Audi, Skoda, Volkswagen with the travel assist when I think of 
Mercedes or even BMW, I strongly feel that they are just significantly ahead in the realm of semi-autonomous assisted driving, especially when compared to the Tesla Autopilot. That means he should also have the lane change assistant feature enabled in FSD here, right? So theoretically, everything is clear here, but for some reason, he doesn't allow any lane changes to be executed. He doesn't, for some still unknown reason. He also completely fails to adjust the vehicle speed to match the posted speed limit. That means if it happened to be 80 at some point, it hasn't been adjusted back to the correct 80, neither in speed, Traffic sign recognition sometimes didn't work 100%. That has nothing whatsoever to do with the autopilot feature, does it? Well, somehow the topic is now over. So this is definitely assisted driving with lane keeping assist, with steering assist. So we're creeping along here at 77 behind the truck. Look at that. Now he's finally letting us through. Like a miracle, all of a sudden it starts working perfectly. No one knows why. He just changed lanes all by himself. That was really nice and smooth and quick too. But it really feels like we've been stuck behind the sprinter for the entire duration of the clip. Yeah. Somehow that isn't quite fully developed, right? So, and every time we intervene ourselves, like just making a lane change, the autopilot disengages. Now we have to press the lever piece twice or once, depending on the setting, to reactivate it. And that, I think, really has nothing at all to do with the future and FSD full self-driving capabilities as we understand them. Not really. And now the Tesla fanboys can go around saying, yes, this is purely a European problem. Yes, yeah, sorry that we live here in Germany and Europe. That might be the case in America. There are some videos about it too. A bit better now. Look, Stefan, 80 is here now. So now it recognizes 80. And it just keeps on driving at 100. That has absolutely nothing to do with predictive control or even adaptive control, right? That's just simply, yeah, I can now drive here with lane keeping and steering assist. Did I make a mistake? It went out again with only a few lane changes. It has to bounce twice here again. Now, I definitely need to manually adjust the pace once again. So, sorry, Tesla. So for me, by 2024, that's just way, way too little. Every ID3 can do that. With a travel assist, if I may say so, currently better than some others. And then there are also a few, now it's gone off again. There are a few people who always write down to me, yeah, but it can't handle tight, sharp turns. So guys, when it comes to semi-autonomous driving in those tight, sharp turns, it might not always be the definitive be-all and end-all, right? We've driven a bit further down the road and we want to give it a try now. It's three lanes, everything's clear here and nothing behind us. Whether he leaves now and you see uh, the same picture again, that absolutely nothing at all is happening here in this spot. So he always says to turn the steering wheel slightly and it immediately aborts. So I really have to say, lane change assistant, FSD, enhanced autopilot, it just doesn't seem to work somehow. So at least not here on the A115. Near Berlin, so now he's gone out again. Do I have to double press here again? So you see, this isn't bashing either. That's just one of those, a specific use case where it unfortunately doesn't work here. And sure, now everyone is definitely going to write again that on my 58,000 kilometers, he didn't make a single mistake or error ever. Sorry, you guys are making mistakes. Look, now it's offering it again. Now it should work. Now we turn here slightly. Yes, broke off again. So that's, I don't know. So sorry, turning again, cut off again. Stefan, what's the issue here? I keep having this problem and don't know why. I don't know. Everything seems really very complicated. Tesla, what exactly am I doing wrong here? We want to measure the interior noise levels with you at a consistent speed of 50 km h. Fifty-five, fifty-six decibels, a top value like a Mercedes S-Class. We're driving at 70 kmh with impressively low cabin noise. 59, 60 decibels, that's also an excellent and impressive top value. And now we'll be accelerating again to reach 100 kmh. Sixty-nine, seventy decibels, that's also a top value. Just for comparison, a VW ID3 is generally around the mid 70 decibels, which means our measurement is quite impressive. We want to measure the acceleration with you. I've already reset the draggy device. Stefan, countdown. Three, two, one, go. 534 HP, 30, 50, 70, 90, 100. And now we are going to perform the brake test. Oh, but it really doesn't convince me at all, right? Maybe we need to try again? No, that... He didn't brake properly, so there was a delay affecting the overall timing and flow. So the brakes, they're not really performing all that well. Yeah, 3.8 seconds is supposed to be the sprint from 0 to 100 km of age.
We measured 6.54, that has really nothing at all to do with the 3.8 seconds they claimed. 0 to 50 in 4.46 seconds and 0 to 60 in 4.85 seconds, if I read this correctly. Well, I'm a little disappointed now, aren't I? That really isn't all that surprising. Yes, I would suggest resetting the draggy and then Steph can do another countdown and we'll test it a second time, okay? Yes, 3, 2, 1, go! 30, 50, 70, 90, 100, and we'll go ahead and perform the brake test once more. Yeah, that was already significantly better than before. And we're looking at our test track again, noting a 0 to 100 kilometers per hour time of 6.54 seconds, which is pretty fast. That doesn't really work, does it? Well, that's actually kind of really sad. And with 0 0.50, 0 0.60 similar values. So where do the 3.8 seconds come from? I know, downhill with a tailwind. Stefan and I were still contemplating what could it be, because actually Tesla is already quite performant, you know? Right? Yes, they keep it. Yes. So we've activated the track mode once again, and we've also patiently waited for it to temper the battery and everything else before proceeding. And, 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 and want to make another third attempt, because we just can't leave it like this. Step and count. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one, go. And there he goes, 30, 50, 70, 90, 100. We're doing the brake test, and of course, we definitely want to go in nicely here once again to see how well it performs under these conditions. He definitely brakes much better now. And look, with the track mode enabled, it's running much more smoothly. 0 to 100, 447 seconds, 0 to 50, 2.2 seconds, and 0 to 60, 2.61 seconds. I think we can quite easily link that entire performance to a time of around 3.8 seconds overall. Yeah. Why can we do that? because we might not have perfect road conditions or ideal tire temperature, which means we need to account for variables that significantly affect our performance. And I think he just delivers a really solid performance there. Therefore, you probably really have to activate the track mode in order to get the best possible results. Yes, everything here is properly pre-tempered, including the brakes. And that sounds logical too, because I'm thinking of my Tesla Model S Performance Raven. We also had to activate the cheetah mode, carefully precondition the battery pack to the right temperature, and take care of various other necessary details. And let's be honest, very few actually do non gas right, Stefan? Yeah. Where do you do it? So, and I'll say, just in everyday driving, even without the track mode, the car is simply very powerful and has got plenty of torque. So, there's really absolutely nothing at all to criticize, right? Absolutely not. That means... When we drive out onto a country road and need to act quickly, it has that instant Tesla punch and immediately takes off with a surge of impressive and exhilarating acceleration. Here there's a 70 kph limit, so it's really quick and agile. The performance model is definitely worth considering, don't you think? Absolutely, yes, it's fun. So, especially with the Tesla Model 3 Highland, that's a whole different kind of punch and impact, right? Sure thing. Uh, let's delve into the topic of travel comfort. Stefan, how does your seat of the pants feeling compare? The seats are super comfortable. I don't need to say more. I'm sitting here just fine. I have good lateral support, good thigh support. Nice and comfortable, definitely. And the chassis, what's your take on that? You can definitely tell it's a performance model. It's a bit tighter and it's also a bit harder. But it's really nice and comforting when the driver doesn't start doing any of that crazy and wild stuff with you all over again. Yes, he's definitely a curve hugger, but sometimes I just get the feeling that I'm always hopping in the wrong spots or places that I shouldn't be at. Yes, that's right. When I think of a high-performance sports car, I know the comparison isn't perfect. Just take my weekend car, a 911. It has a totally different level of stability and driving, right? Yeah, absolutely. That means it has different track control and slip points. Here, it feels both firm and sometimes comfortable in everyday use, offering a balanced experience that's well suited for both short trips and long drives. In some places, he is actually really so clumsy, uh, so unbalanced, as I would say. And that was precisely our observation. Remember, with the used Tesla Model 3 that we had bought some time ago, it kind of felt like driving a go-kart and it was indeed quite a lot of fun, but it wasn't exactly performance oriented, meaning you couldn't really extract the maximum performance potential from the car with the given suspension setup. And I think it's similar here. So we can actually hope that with the model update, which probably won't happen before the end of the year, Tesla isn't showing their hand at the moment. So for all those out there hoping on one side that 
a cozy and comfortable Model Y and wanted to have a really nice, uh, comfortable and smooth tuning. I think they did an excellent job with the Highland, but maybe also for the performance, like with the Model 3 performance, just add adaptive dampers that can effectively balance everyday driving with great grip control in performance scenarios, ensuring a dynamic and thoroughly enjoyable experience. Because we did some off-road testing in this area to get a better sense of its performance. Had quite a noticeable skid there. You might recall that sharp curve where I had to brake really hard and then make the turn. We almost saw ourselves in that tree already. That was a bit sporty. I'd say we don't always show you everything because it's not always possible. We test the car repeatedly between clips in our dimensions to ensure it meets our high standards and specific requirements, guaranteeing reliable performance. We do that with all cars. It has nothing to do with us doing it differently here than with any other. We're always here then on similar test tracks in the respective areas. So in that sense, I think we do have a comparison and I would say performance in a straight line, performance in curves, sorry, Tesla, but it's tight. Ah, quite a cool sound, isn't it? It's definitely okay. You're genuinely doing quite well here. Yeah, kind of like a Tesla, right? Yeah. Um, but also here in the Model Y with the big trunk, you have to manage to get such a sound first. Right, exactly. You've got a lot more resonance in there, basically. So it's really fun to listen to music here. Now you've got Apple Music integrated. You've got uh, Spotify. So actually, the software is prepared for everything. Uh, the only thing that's kind of missing, where Tesla might need to open up a bit more, would be something like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. They are to uh, mirror his phone. Sure. But do you actually need it? Do you really need to have it here when you already have such excellent software available? Actually not. But if you like it, you likely do enjoy it quite a bit. But please write in the comments. I'd really like to hear your opinion on this. Is Apple CarPlay or Android Auto a must-have for you? Or do you say, yeah, if it's there, I'll use it, but otherwise I don't need it? Let's conclude with the Tesla Model Y performance and explore whether the best-selling electric car in the world is also the best, considering aspects like its performance, range, technology, and overall user experience. The world is, and I honestly have to say, I am actually really very, very convinced by the overall performance of the Tesla Model Y. Yeah, in the end, I do like the whole package. You've got plenty of space, you're sitting comfortably. Sure, the performance model has a nice punch, but we don't really need that. Otherwise, I'm satisfied with everything else. But I'd say for the standard range, uh, 60 kWh battery, rear wheel drive, decent. I think it has 300 HP. 44,099 euros for a storage vehicle with an environmental bonus now at the end of the quarter, June 30th, starting at just 38,099 euros. That's simply unbeatable for a 4.75 meter car. Uh, what did all that cost you? Yeah. Trunk 800 liters, 854 liters, front 117 liter frunk foldable seats. So I would say this whole package, it's no surprise that this car is so successful. You get quite a good amount for the money you're spending. In the end, you need to develop the important ability to compromise rather than nitpicking every single detail and constantly wishing for this or that. You just have to accept a car exactly as it is, right? Yeah, you should simply say, okay, this is my car. I want to drive a Tesla Model Y uh, or I just don't want to. That's why I can only recommend you to go to the many Tesla stores if you're interested in such a car and schedule a test drive. The guys there are really smart. They're in a great mood, so you can thoroughly test the car. And you have to see if the price is right at the moment. Tesla cars are usually more interesting price-wise just before the end of the quarter or year, right? Yes. Since they likely have to leave. Or when there's a facelift, then of course as well. But you have to keep an eye out. Are there special leasing deals? Are there special financing options? I believe there are also currently 0% refinancing options for the Model Y. Well, Tesla does occasionally offer attractive deals because otherwise Tesla tends to have the image that financing and leasing can sometimes be quite pricey, right? Yeah, already. And the vehicle price compared to other manufacturers thus um, levels out. And with that, we've reached the end of the first video with the Tesla Model Y performance. In a few days, the second video will follow, where we go on the highway and measure consumption at 100, 120, 140, 160 km h. And of course, we also want to do the charging check. How long does the Tesla Model Y performance take from 10 to 80%? Yes, I hope you liked the first one. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Feel free to go ahead and check if you're part of the electric comedy drive-in. If not, we'd appreciate your support with a subscription. 
Yeah, and then you won't miss the second part with a consumption perception charging check. Thanks for watching. Stay healthy and see you soon. Yours, Ollie. You, Stefan. You know what I don't quite understand about Tesla? Well. What? You simply well. can't find any carbon anywhere in the whole car, right? Except for this small little edge right here. Yes, exactly. Those French fries. Ego, don't you think? What could they have been thinking? A bit more carbon would suit it well, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yes, with the color, right? All right.